today, Amy from Peggy Farm and Forage, is that right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> has come to visit me and Sam to chat about food. And we started talking about all sorts of interesting things that we can forage. This here is rosemary willow herb, which um, I, I remember when I was going on walks with my family around woodlands and stuff, it was one of my favourites. Yeah, so you can turn this into a beautiful fermented tea, which is somewhat like a... Fermented, Sam, did you hear so that? It's a fermented, <laughs> fermented tea, um, which is somewhat like a jasmine, like really okay. like aromatic tea. Would you like take a black the flowers? Tea. So yeah, actually most plants when you harvest them, it's not when they're in flower, but okay. rose bay willow herb, this is the perfect time to harvest. Yeah. And all you do is you just snap it, pull it, and this is, this is what you use. You take it home and you let it wilt for one day. Okay. So it's just some of the moisture is coming out of the leaves. Yeah. And then what you do, once it's all wilted, take the leaves and you just roll them like this yeah. in your hand. And just get these little twists. Yeah. And then you pack them into a jar yeah. and you let them ferment between... It's, it's going to be different depending on like what part of the country you yeah. are, like how humid it is, how hot it is. But you let it ferment for, I would do like four days. Yeah. And then dehydrate it and then you have this beautiful, tea. amazing aromatic tea. And you can put smoke under it, smoke anything under it to make like more of like an Assam kind of style. But um, yeah, wow. I, I, for years I just, I, I just thought, yeah. you know, there's some plants I'm like, oh, no, that. I but planted now it. I, love I planted it, it here because I knew you were coming. And it... Yeah. <laughs> so this is broadleaf plantain. Yeah. And this is ribwort plantain. Right. One is, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Broadleaf, ribby sort of leaf. No way. Yeah, really? they're, they're both the same and they, they both do the same job. Right. So they're, they're incredible for wounds. Things like eczema, insane for. Yeah. So you just need to make a little poultice and just put it on your eczema and Funnily it enough, should help. Funny enough, I was uh, over at Lazorabs yesterday. Oh yeah. And uh, she said as well, it's better than, say, um, dock for nettle stings. Oh yeah, it is. Um, it's much better. For all sorts of stings, it's really good, actually. So There's it's an amazing plant. But the thing that I really like about it is actually in a symbiotic relationship with a mushroom, and it actually makes the plant taste pretty mushroomy. It's easy. You can just eat it like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, go on then. I mean, it's, it's kind of bitter, but yeah. <laughs> just eat a bit of that and tell me it doesn't taste mushroomy. Okay. It's so mushroomy. <laughs> yeah, that's... Isn't it? Wow. So yeah, these are living in a... Probably what like fungal hyphae smell like to like a, yeah. an ant. Yeah, probably. It, um, there's there's like a plant called a mushroom plant and this tastes way more like mushrooms than that actual plant. But yeah, it's in a symbiotic relationship, a mycorrhizal relationship with some fungus and that goes all the way through the plant and that's why it tastes like mushrooms. And you can use all these leaves in salads and you could steam them like spinach. Mm. But this is absolutely everywhere and it loves hard and rough ground and... Does it have like roots you can use or...? Yeah, you can use the whole, the whole plant. The whole um, plant? Yes, so roots and aerial parts. Um, that is so mushroomy. It's so mushroomy, isn't it? So, as the saying goes, um, dock leaf is what you use to uh, redeem the nettle sting. Yeah. Most people, they'll just grab the dock and go like that, which is completely useless. Yeah. It's useless. actually this <laughs> tiny little shoot that you want from the plant which has this really mucilaginous sap whoa see that so this is actually the part that you want to use against nettles and this is just so good for your skin you know you could use this just as a moisturizer you just, if you do, want is that, or... is that your like your morning skincare routine yeah <laughs> <laughs> um honestly like if you get a load i'm just like mm. and really squish all the sap out but yeah, this, this sap is incredible, you know. If you did a combination of that and the plantain, that would be the best thing against no way. nettles and bee so, stings. So, so and it, it, my, my dad's been lying to me this my whole life. Yeah, I think we've, we've all been lied to. Even. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. We've got a crab apple tree on site. That is very cool, you've got that. Had no idea about that. Crab apple jelly. Crab apple sorbet, that would be crab crazy. Crab apple sorbet? Yeah. Oh, that. that must be good. Yeah. Because you've got that more acidity. Yeah, totally. Ooh. So this is wood sorrel. And it, it looks quite a lot like ivy, but um, it's not. <laughs> it's just plain green. And normally ivy has this like little white circle in it. Um, but it just tastes like really sour apple. 
and they're good to just if you're really thirsty in the woods and you haven't got a drink just have this yeah and, and if you don't have a crab apple tree you can just do wood sorrel sorbet totally yeah it's a very similar taste oh some nice rowan there I love rowan i love making um, necklaces out of those seeds. necklaces yeah you can just oh, you, what if you dehydrate them they still you don't stay. even need to dehydrate them you can just literally pick them like that off the tree and then just mm. thread them through a thread and just wear it as a necklace and it just they're dry enough that it doesn't go rotten and moldy uh, no but they just sort of shrink to make this nice little red bead oh yeah good old rowan yeah good old rowan this is kind of like the wrong time of year for this but also they i just tried it and they still taste good so like on bramble yeah the buds of the leaves um they're quite tasty and they taste quite buttery and like really? floral yeah um so what yeah, like that yeah that's it just eat they're it. really nice sautéed on like and put on toast like sautéed I mean my butter. taste is compromised I've just started eating no, a unripe crab apple I think they're, they're, that, that was a palate cleanser uh -huh. so this is the perfect time to try it <laughs> oh isn't that <laughs> that's unusual isn't it wow actually I think it tastes a bit better this time of year but in the spring it's a bit more it's not as dry but the flavour's more buttery that's an intense flavour yeah Bramble's actually amazing. It's really good for wounds as but well. But you know, the tips of a plant, that's where they've got the highest concentration of nutrients and stuff yeah. as well. So that's it. All stuff that flavors in there. So I'm just going to eat this. Um, if you ever get a wound, you can you can heat this up and you can put it on the wound and it should massively help. So really? Yeah. What do you guys call this? Sticky grass or goose sticky grass. Sticky grass. In, in a, my part of London, it was called Sticky Willy. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> But it seems like everywhere in the UK has their own name for it. So in the spring, you can take this as like a spring tonic to clean out your lymphatic system what, from the heavy winter. Yeah, what, yeah, big Christmas. Heavy Christmas. Um, yeah, it's, it's very good for the lymphatic system. It, the, there's a legend that if you drink this every day for 90 days, you'll be the most beautiful you've ever been. Um. <laughs> so um, asking for a friend, how would you go about that? So all you do is you make a cold infusion, which is really easy. What, you just, like, like this? Yeah, you just chop. Take the aerial parts, chop it finely, put it in cold water in the fridge overnight, that's it. You don't need to use heat, you don't need to ferment or anything like that. It's just ready to go. It'll be a beautiful green tonic. Cool. I like it with a pinch of salt. Well, we should meet up again in 90 days and see how it turns out for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this time of year, it's putting all its energy into the seeds. Yeah. So, and they're here. And this is a natural, well, this is a native caffeine. So these what, little the guys, seeds? yeah. So you can collect really? tons of the seeds, dry them, roast them as you would a coffee bean. No way. And then, yeah, that's a native caffeine. So it's super cool. Wow. Yeah, and it tastes really good. Can you eat um, them raw? The seeds yeah, or? you can eat it raw. I, I've never tasted it raw, but let's try it right now. Missed. No. That's all right. Oh, actually, is it? It's got a little little burst to it. We can make Again, a if you're a that. cow, you'd enjoy that. Oh man, I think you could do like a vegan caviar because it's got that little burst. Like for me, I was like, oh, that looks like some kind of hog weed and I don't want to touch yes. it or anything. And there's also something we'll see in a bit that is completely deadly. But this, is, this has a really pleasant name. Is it a pleasant plant? It is, it's a very pleasant plant. It's got loads of medicinal virtues and it's really good to use in a culinary sense. What's its name? Um, so this is Angelica. Yeah. And the Latin name is Angelica Silvestris, so that's by the woods or wild nice. um, Angelica. And it's got a really aromatic, so nice. like aromatic, oily smell. Um, so, like, I don't know. Like a honey almost. So that's it. That's a long this word. is in the Apiaceae family, which is the carrot family. Yeah. Um, which is full of tons of delicious uh, members. And then they have a few that are just completely deadly, like the most dangerous plants that you could imagine. Convenient that, isn't it? Convenient. It's like the and... human population. You've got loads of people that are perfectly fine. And you're like, oh, deadly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. Yeah. And the thing is, they look the with... same. You can't tell yeah, yeah. the difference between these, no, these deadly psycho people. Psychopaths then. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and the normal ones, you yeah, just, yeah. it's so hard to tell. So... When it comes to identifying Apiaceae, it's, it's quite difficult just by mm. looking at the flowers because the flowers all look so similar. This flower is almost identical to hemlock water dropwort, which we've got yeah. down here, which is deadly. Um, so the way that you tell the difference between Apiaceae is the leaf types and different features on the stems and things yes. like that. Um, just as a warning, 
this uh, um, this is not a how to identify and eat weird plants. Yes. This is this is us having a little bit of fun around uh, around the site because obviously growing lots of food here, but it's kind of interesting to see what's just we haven't touched this area apart from putting some willows. So it's kind of nice to see what's it is in the seed bank. And There's just up. so many amazing edible plants and fungi all around and us. And how would you use Angelica, like food-wise? There's loads of different ways to use it. Personally, when the stem is young and tender, yeah. it's good to candy it. It just makes a lovely, delicious wow. sweet that's good for digestion. Yeah, yeah. So that's just the main way to use it, but obviously there's infinite ways you yeah, could yeah. use it, like whatever your imagination takes you kind of thing. Wow, thank um, you. Should I say about the Apiaci saps? Yes. So... <laughs> So, nearly all Apiaceae, um, whether they're edible or deadly, have a phototoxic sap, which means that when you get the sap on your skin and then the sun comes into contact with your skin, it causes really bad blisters. Mm. But um, you, if you eat it, it doesn't do anything because no, obviously no it doesn't sunlight. see the sun. Yeah. Where the sun don't shine. Yeah. So, here we have hemlock water drop wart which is one of the most poisonous plants in the UK. But you're touching it. If not the world. It's okay to touch. Right. It's the sap that you don't want to get on you. No. And even if the sap went on your hands, it's not too bad. It's if you didn't wash your hands and later licked it, which it could be a problem, which I've totally done. And I went to hospital and everything. Really? Yes. Um, but I was just having a panic attack because I knew how toxic it was. Yeah. And then I, f it was really crazy. I got the sap in my, uh, on my fingers a bit. I was actually doing a video on how to identify them. And um, yeah, I said, make sure you wash your hands after in case you lick it. I licked it. And then my mouth just rushed with sugar. It tasted really? like hairspray. Then my mouth rushed with sugar and I had all these tingling feelings in my face. Um, so I panicked, went to the hospital and they said the amount you had could kill a rat. So... I was like, well, okay. that, that would kind of like if you died from that, that would kind of like not be a good credit to your body, would it? No, it's really yeah. a bit pathetic. I really. know that would be really pathetic, yeah. But I think I was just because I didn't know the toxicology of it and yeah. I couldn't find it out, I just started panicking, yeah. Um, I think you know, I quite like just growing tomatoes because I know you can't eat the leaves but you can eat the fruit, yeah, and it keeps it simple, yes. <laughs> but things like this, like, so that's the thing, things like Angelica become quite complicated. Mm. If you want to forage something beautiful like that, you have to be aware of hemlock water drop, basically a lot of the hemlocks that are in the yeah, Apiaceae yeah. family. And this, this has like parsley like looking leaves, which you said yeah. when, when it's a seedling, you, don't, you wouldn't actually yeah. really be able to tell the difference maybe between a parsley seedling and a seedling of this. That's it. And then in this part of the world, in Wales... Which makes it's, things exciting. Yeah. In this part of the world, it's... This grows freely everywhere. It really likes damp, like places that hold a lot mm. of damp. So obviously in Wales, that's just going to, it could be anywhere. Yeah. Um, and if you've got self-seeded parsley, you need to be careful because it could be hemlock water drop wart, yeah. just volunteering. And then you're going to be in a whole world of trouble, especially when the, the plant is young too. It's most, most poisonous. Right, I'm um, not, I don't think I'm going to eat parsley here anymore now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, that's why I like cur <laughs> that, the curly parsley. Curly parsley. Yes, there we go. keep it to curly parsley. Yeah. Keep it simple. Nice. Um, but yeah, this is a very... Sometimes like ignorance is bliss, you know? Yeah, totally. I mean... <laughs> Till you're in hospital. <laughs> you're in hospital. Um, so this is a neurotoxin. And, if, and by the way, it tastes delicious. It tastes and smells incredible. So it can easily be mistaken for like a, a parsnip, a wild parsnip yeah, yeah. or something like that. Because you're like... Oh, deadly things, they smell horrible. But no, this tastes and smells very tempting. I feel sorry for the person that said, yeah, it tastes and smells great. Yeah. <laughs> and 30 minutes later, dead. Yeah. Well, apparently you can nibble a bit of it. No, no, no. <laughs> we're not saying that. No, no, we're not saying that, yeah. <laughs> it, towards the end, you know, it takes about half an hour to set in. And as you are just about to die, it contorts and tenses all your muscles so tight that you are left with a huge, big smile on your face. And that's, it's, uh, there's, a, there's like a, a good way to go. Yeah, there's a, there's a tale of a farmer who committed suicide in Sardinia and he was just found with a big smile. So it's known as the sardonic smile. Sardonic smile. With a hemlock water drop port. Wow. But it's, I love it. These are really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were earlier this year, I feel, as well. Yeah, I thought that as well. 